we visited one of the most breathtaking locations on Istanbul's Bosphorus, the iconic Rumeli Fortress. While uncovering the stories behind this important location's history, we mentioned Mehmet the Conqueror, who built this fortress. And now, we'll be cooking one of his favorite dishes, right here in the Rumeli Fortress. The dish we'll be cooking today is called Mouton Jana. It's a lamb stew flavored with dried fruits, almonds, and honey. So the first thing I'm gonna do is saute our lamb. I'll just let the pan heat up for a minute or two to get some nice color on the meat. This video was filmed at a distance that does not pose a risk to any cultural properties. Instead of the flavorings used in modern Turkish cooking like peppers and tomatoes, in the Ottoman times they didn't have those ingredients, so they used things like dried fruits and spices to flavor their food. This dish also includes some pearl onions, so I'm just gonna get started peeling those just until our pan heats up. Onions are an integral part of almost every dish across the planet. And it adds a nice savory flavor to balance the sweetness of the dried fruit. Now that our pan is nice and hot, I can add the lamb. Just using a little bit of olive oil. In Ottoman times, the most popular cooking fat was actually butter, but today I'll be using olive oil, which is also traditional. When you hear that sound, you know your meat is gonna be good. Nice and hot. So while my meat cooks in a separate pan, I'm gonna add my apricots, figs, and almonds. I'll just chop the dried fruits roughly. This dish uses a variety of dried fruits. I have figs, apricots, raisins, and dried plums. So I just added a little water to my pan, and now I can add my dried fruits. In addition to the chopped apricots and figs, I'll also add my almonds to the second pan. Now that my meat has browned a little bit, I'm going to add the pearl onions. And now I'll add my dried plums and raisins into the meat. And some honey for some extra sweetness. And a little water. So this recipe is interesting in that it uses two different techniques to cook the dried fruits. Some are added into the meat and stewed together with it. And in a separate pan, I saute the rest. And the last thing I'll be adding to this stew is sumak, which is gonna give it a nice sour flavor. So this dish really is a combination of sweet, sour, and savory. Just a pinch or two is enough. I'll also add some salt to our stew. One last stir. And now I'll put the lid on and let it stew for about 45 minutes. This video was filmed at a distance that does not pose a risk to any cultural properties. Now my dried fruits and almonds have been cooking for about 10 minutes and the water has been absorbed and the fruits have softened, so I'm gonna take it off of the heat. So while my lamb is cooking, I'm gonna make a classic Ottoman style bread to go with it. I'll use a little flour to keep it from sticking. Carefully.
So Ottoman bread usually consists of a variety of grains with some seeds and spices either mixed into the dough or on top. Today I'll be using poppy seeds, sesame seeds and black sesame seeds. I just love the nutty flavor of sesame seeds on my bread. Now into the oven. Now I'll add a small dish of water to the oven because the steam helps the bread cook properly. Just something like this is enough. And now I'll just let the bread cook for 15 or 20 minutes. I think our bread is ready. It looks amazing. Look at that. Mm. My lamb has been cooking for about 45 minutes and most of the water has evaporated. So I think it's time to clean up my table and then we're ready to serve. This video was filmed at a distance that poses no risk to any cultural properties. We're ready to serve. So I've got my beautiful stewed lamb, my fruit and nut topping, and all I need as a finishing touch is a little bit of time. So just look at this beautiful table. We've got our traditional Ottoman style bread and a drink as well. This is called Sirken Jebun. It's made with honey, vinegar, cloves, cinnamon and lemon. And it accompanies the rich Ottoman dishes very well. It helps to digest all of those heavy, meaty dishes. Hmm. And of course, we've got our Mutan Jana the favorite dish of Fatih Sultan Mehmed, the man who constructed this fortress. Mm. Sweet, sour and savory. This is just an Ottoman feast. We hope you enjoyed our explorations through the history and flavors of the Rumeli fortress. Join us on this journey as we continue to cook our way through Turkey's ancient cities. And don't forget to follow us.